Hi guys, Sully Dutt here and today I'm doing a video review on the Edifier R1850DB. Now this, these are a set of active bookshelf speakers, a 2.0 uh, system. Now you'll get around 70 watts of power out of them, so do bear that in mind in terms of uh, positioning them in terms of its competitors. They're available for £160 in the UK and $200 in the US. Links will be down in the description below in case you're interested. Now these speakers are actually ex really well built, they've got like an all wooden enclosure, uh, they've got a speaker grill uh, which can be removed as you'll be able to see right now, and they've got a little LED, well, LED light at the, um, on the right hand speaker which deals with all the inputs uh, and the outputs of the speaker which pretty much determine in what mode it's in. So for example if I were to change it to, to PC it's going to change to a green colour, when I change it to optical which is what it's connected now it'll go to red. Um, now these uh, the, the set of speakers come with little remotes. Now the remote itself, I'm not sure if my camera will focus, but essentially gives you play, um, play, pause, previous, and next uh, options, and then you've got uh, your input selection and a volume up and down with a mute button. The remote itself is extremely lightweight, uh, so I've got no problems with it. I do feel that it's not as responsive. Let's say if I were to point away from um, the speaker it won't pick it up as well so the infrared signal doesn't seem to be that strong however um, it does do what it says on a tin it's a little remote that provides you access to uh, the speaker's uh, controls now if you want to tweak the uh, speaker's um, control you can actually do that via the back of um, the back of the, um, the right speaker so just showing you a picture because it's pretty much the same thing uh, on screen which is on Amazon. Now you'll be able to see over here you've got a volume knob um, at, um, uh, at the bottom um, which is essentially the same thing as your remote which is the plus and minus and then you've got uh, your bass and treble adjustment. I have dialed the bass a few notches down and the treble a few notches up like literally two clicks on either side. In terms of inputs and outputs, you've got auxiliary and PC uh, inputs, and this is via RCA inputs. You do get cables in the box. You've also got coaxial uh, input if you want, so that's digital, and you've got optical, which is the one I'm using right now. You also do have a subwoofer output, so it's worth bearing in mind. These don't come with a subwoofer, um, so you know if you want to connect that external subwoofer, you can do so. And then there's like a, a left speaker out, um, a cable which is provided really thick and very long cable I should say uh, so it's great so if you've you know if you haven't got like a desk set up like myself then what you can find is that you can stretch these on the other side of the TV for example so I've seen some people on Amazon using these uh, with a TV so yeah you will have no problems with left and right channels being quite a, far, um, quite a distance apart due to that cable that's provided. There's also a power on and off, um, like a physical power on and off if you do prefer to do that but um, I would suggest just sticking to the remote and just hitting the off button. Um, now. Other than that, uh, there's not much else to comment about in terms of the build quality, the design. There is, however, in terms of connectivity, worth bearing in mind that these speakers do have Bluetooth connectivity as well. Um, so if you do want to connect up your smartphone to it, it's Bluetooth 4.0, I was just going to check, and there's no aptX codec or, or, of such, but it's just a useful little addition that if you do want to connect to your smartphone or just listen to your tunes really quickly, you can do so um, with, with your phone. So now let's go on to the most important part of the review is actual sound quality. Now first of all I do want to talk about the specs, in other words what the, cap what the speakers are capable of and this is based on the, um, the, the specs that are listed on Amazon or, and or uh, Edifier's website. It has a 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, frequency range. In other words, 60 hertz is good because it gets into more of like the sub bass tones, however there is going to be that roll off and it's something I'm going to comment on in just a bit. Um, after I play you some music. So without further ado, I'm going to go quiet, play some copyright free music and link will be down in the description below in case you're interested. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just go into a sound demo.
sound demo for you. I know it's not ideal when it comes to music listening that you do want to re re reference a song that you potentially know, like, let's say a Bruno Mars song or so of sorts, but this song at least you can access yourselves on your own speakers or headphones and listen to yourselves to see how it sounds. Now, in this song there was a variety of different things going on with these speakers and I must say I'm very impressed with the sound quality that these things deliver, not just on that song but just generally speaking you're bringing it into a reference with that song so you guys can relate to it. Now, even though it doesn't have that subwoofer out, uh, as in that subwoofer that's connected, even though it's got subwoofer output, that sub bass is missing. That r low end rumble does feel cut off and you can hear it in more bassier songs. In that's, that little extract there, there should be a bit more of a, a extension into the lower end. However, that's not really the case, so it's worth bearing in mind that if you're really into bassy music, you might want to consider a system with a subwoofer that's included, and or, if you already have one, to connect it up to this, um, to this system. Now, moving on from the sub-bass extension, I must say the mid-bass is good. There is a little bit of wobble, it's not perfectly tonally accurate, it, there is a little bit of a sort of wobble, a little bit uncontrolled sort of vibe, however on the whole these little speakers in front of you deliver a great bass response. Their size is pretty small and yet the way that they deliver this really punchy bass and even though it might be a little bit a touch uncontrolled is very impressive. It does feel like oh I've got some good bass going with these, uh, these monitor speakers. As a result you, of the uh, mid bass slam, you do get a little bit of recessed lower mids. They're a little bit pushed back, they're not as fluent and as, as much as you'd like. Even though I dialed the treble up a little bit and dialed the bass a little bit down, I still felt that it just didn't have that sort of um, forward sounding nature that you'd potentially expect with pure monitor speakers which aren't bass driven at all or don't have like a subwoofer type of unit um, in them as in a woofer unit within them. Um, so in this respect the lower mids were a little bit pushed back but the upper mids did come across really well. So vocals like you heard in that song even though there were very small extracts of vocals in that song the vocals came out really well. They didn't feel like they were overly recessed or pushed back. And then moving on from that, you've got the highs, which really do extend very well. That dedicated tweeter on each of the, the speakers does a fantastic job in delivering a nice little um, high-end clarity. You get that nice high-end extension and you feel a little bit more engaged. That sparkle, that, that, that excitement is there with these speakers. Now what's most impressive to me personally, and it's something I came across with the Edifier, I think it's the S3000 Pro, is the soundstage. These small speakers for their size and in terms of the price range that you're paying are delivering a fantastic width and depth and fantastic instrument separation which is something that you would normally not associate with relatively small active bookshelf speakers or even passive bookshelf speakers. The, the sheer size of these things, it's really impressive yet with the, the, the more prestigious S3000 Pro, those things are literally almost double the size in width and depth and everything, so you kind of expect that like larger presence or at your desk. These still deliver that fantastic sound. Yes, it won't sound as wide and as deep as, as speakers that cost double, triple the price of it, but for their size and for their price point, I must say I was very impressed. And to say that, you know, these speakers are among the best sounding sub 200 pound speakers specifically in that department um, wouldn't be an understatement. So I mean that pretty much leads me to my conclusion what do I think about the these active bookshelf speakers. Well I really like them. The only real flaw that I found is that it doesn't have a dedicated subwoofer but at this price range should you really expect a dedicated subwoofer? Some will say yes, some will say no. In my opinion, you know, you, you might be getting a subwoofer, but then you might be um, uh, losing out on the clarity of the, the mids, for example, let, let's say from Logitech, uh, Logitech PC speakers. If you're comparing them to them, then you're going to get a lot better mid-range clarity and much better high-end extension instrument separation than you'd get on a set of Logitech PC speakers. So, all I'm trying to say over here is that these set of speakers are very impressive. Sonically, they are very, um, very well-rounded. They look beautiful. They're functional as well. They've got all the right inputs and outputs that you'd want. So what more is there that you'd want at under 200 pounds? 
So that's pretty much it. I would highly, highly, actively, pun intended, um, recommend them. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Like if you like this re review, subscribe if you want to see more, a favorite and share if you feel it will be helpful to your family and friends. All right guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care.